All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're gonna do a little bit of a fig walk and talk. And that right now you guys are attached to my chest. You're on a GoPro, or I'm filming on a GoPro. And we're gonna look at a number of the, the fig trees here in the patio, also some of the in-ground trees. We're gonna make some observations. We're gonna talk about a various differing amount of topics. And I don't even know what I'm gonna talk about. I do know that I want to talk about a couple of the graphs that we have here. I want to talk a little bit about compost tea. And then I also want to talk about some of the trees that still at this point really have not woken up or some of them are just waking up. And that's pretty crazy because the time of filming today, it is the end of June. We're two days actually after Father's Day. so. The first thing here I want to look at really quickly with you guys is some of these younger trees. These are trees that really I just put into five gallon size pots uh, or they were in five gallon size pots and they were really not well established um, at the beginning of this season. You know, as an example here is this really tiny and kind of sad looking white Madeira number one. I also have a very sad looking tree over here. That's a bass's favorite fig. And those two trees, maybe I have another one over there, like a Vertolino. This was also a very small tree right here that's called Small Communa Black. Um, but the number of these trees that are really, really sad, I've recently given them some compost tea. And all of a sudden, guys, I'm telling you, they've perked up, they've greened up a little bit and they're starting to grow and i'm telling you this compost tea i know i've been talking a lot about it in various videos that we've done and i i've yet to actually just put out a video of the actual process that i go through but it's pretty simple and it's really a process that you can find all of the all over the internet uh, but these younger trees over here are doing phenomenal after giving a num like probably all the potted trees here on the patio, at least two or three, about two or three different doses or shots of the compost tea that we made. Um, I would like to do probably another two rounds and then I may call it quits for the year on that. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the benefits are going to be. And it definitely seems like so far, that these small and less mature, less established, very sickly or unhealthy trees. These are really, these are the young ones over here as well. Um, but they're really getting off on the right foot. These, are, these I really don't have to worry about all that much. For the most part, on the majority of them, there's very healthy growth coming in. Um, but for these trees over here that are not established and quite young, these are the ones I really have to worry about. And for sure, they have perked up. They've started to, like, live. Like, it was almost like they were teetering on death for a while. Um, and nothing I could do really was seemingly helping. And all of a sudden, this compost tea just really... Like, this white Madeira number one right here is growing now. Um, whereas it wasn't. I know that this could obviously be a fluke. This... Um, Bass's favorite seems to have turned around a bit. Um, and I'll, tell, I'll show you something else that's rather interesting with all of that. Uh, certainly this tree right here, this Rosa Dagoni I had in a one gallon size pot that really wasn't well rooted. I just up potted it into this very recently. This is starting to green up. It was quite pale. Uh, some of the trees I had received in the mail actually from some trees that I bought are also looking really good and starting to, you know, recover from their trip in the mail and the conditions that they probably were in. And they're looking a lot better. What's really interesting is this tree right here. This is a uh, barn of soap from UC Davis. And for anyone that's ever grown this fig, you will eventually learn that it's heavily affected by fig mosaic virus. And you can see like this leaf right here actually looks pretty decent and the newer leaves that are coming in look really decent and i'm not sure if that's because of the compost tea that i gave them 
but I wonder if that's going to change. That's like an interesting little viewpoint that because of the health of the tree is changing, because these microbes are making the nutrients more available to these trees. Uh, and of course, all that works together with the trees themselves. It just seems like the health of them is getting better. And as we know about fig mosaic virus, the trees seem to shake it off when they get older and more mature. And um, I don't know if it's really a maturity thing. Maybe it's actually just um, getting somewhat established to get the nutrients that it needs and not really established as in like, you know, a mature tree, but a tree that is at least, you know, getting the nutrients that it needs. And this is a really interesting example of that right now, which this is a, you would never even know it. This is an Aishia Black from UC Davis. And this is a grafted tree. And I talked about this last year with you guys. We looked at a lot of the, actually Aishia Black trees that I had, whether they were in the ground, we talked about how that rejuvenation pruning really seems to help them and make them healthier. Um, but we looked at the grafted trees also in containers, like here's one of the grafted trees. You can see the graft union down there at the bottom, hopefully. And this particular tree now looks super, super healthy. So um, this is obviously post, this is healthy way before, way before the compost tea was ever applied. Um, and the same thing has happened with the other I see a black tree that I have. Now there are still some branches on here, like this branch that's still a bit riddled with the virus, but you can see right on the same scaffold is a healthier shoot. And then of course, these two over here, I would consider these relatively healthy as well. And then this shoot over here is by far the healthiest part of the tree. And you can just obviously see great fruit set. Um, I'm gonna turn the pot a little bit just to give it some more light. It's kind of growing into the other trees. But um, yeah, this these trees are very productive and I would actually argue this variety is more, it is definitely a mid-season fig, which is great. Um, because a lot of people were saying, I know my friend Raphael was telling me that it's a late fig but it definitely seems more along the lines of mid-season that and that was years ago i'm not sure if he still thinks that or not but we'll have some data this year to really say if it is mid-season or not but uh the fruit buds compared to these other trees like this is norella hardy chicago and the fruit buds the fruits i should say not the fruit buds the fruits th themselves the progression of the fruits is way ahead of that Aishia Black, but this is the earliest fig in the whole potted tree orchard that actually uh, put out its fruit. So this one's way ahead of all the other ones, but um, comparing it to actually some other mid-season varieties, it's right along with them. Um, there are some late figs that are have yet to even form their fruits yet, and it's really the end of June. We're approaching that last week of June, so we need to really start to see in these late varieties, actually, the fruit set. Um, here's finally one down there on Lampira 1 that's actually forming a fig. So that's really, really good to see. These other trees here in the middle, I actually have them specifically in the middle away from all the others to get a bit more light, uh, give them a bit more room. I know they are still a bit crowded, but uh, I probably should move them away a little bit from each other uh, but these are here for very specific reasons this one here i just put this one into a new container and uh, a larger pot same thing with the one back there so that's the reason just adjusting them to the current conditions but this one here as an example is uh negra primarenka this one you can find in ponza's book and it is actually a very very early black mission um, obviously it's not Black Mission, it's similar to Black Mission, and obviously it'll show different characteristics than Black Mission, but I would have thought by now, you know, I would start seeing fruit buds on this tree, and I'm just not. 
And the reason for that is that this tree is just, even though there really is almost no fig mosaic virus that I can see, um, the tree, for whatever reason, is really slow to get established. And I don't know if that's just every negra primaranca tree or it's just this one. Maybe it's the soil. So for me, I'm, I'm put it aside away from the others and giving it more light, uh, keeping an eye on it. And I've also been more attentive with the compost tea with these in the center to try to try to increase the health of these specifically as much as I can. Here's another one that's really unhealthy. It's Rissoulette from Thierry. This one's so unhealthy that it actually dropped some figs last year. Although I don't even know if this is going to end up being common. But there are actually figs that have formed on this on the tips it just hasn't grown much because of that virus look at that it's pretty unhealthy of a variety and um you know what i really should do probably is cut this way back next season and rejuvenation prune it but you can kind of see down here the base is just really nasty and this stuff here is relatively healthy but uh cutting it back i'm not really sure how much success i'm going to have with this so I guess my real only option here is to see if I can maybe get it a bit more mature, like the Aishia Blacks. It's a bit more healthy, getting the nutrients that it needs, and of course the compost tea. So giving them the soil microbes, you know, it may may actually help. This is Black Manzanita, a new one to me. Um, got this one last year, but there's no fruit buds that I've seen on the tree. So for that reason, same thing with this young Blanche de Saison. So it's, you know, it's not uncommon for the younger ones. And this is really not well established, this Blanche de Saison. It's an air layer I took, I took off this last year and put it in a pot in the fall. So it's, it has an excuse, right? Um, but same thing with this one here, this Chico strawberry. And um, you can see right in there, there's just not really any fruit buds. Now, doesn't mean that if I don't see them right now, doesn't mean that they're not going to show up because they could be there, it's just not visible. And every variety is different. You know, the hardy Chicago's, as they grow, you can see the fruit buds very clearly, clearly in there, excuse me. Um, but other varieties, like a lot of the Adriatics, like even this prosciutto, you don't see the fruit buds in there as it grows. But believe it or not, it's getting the light it needs because look, there's figs on the branches so things are going right with the tree it's just that every variety is a bit different and this manzanita this black manzanita which does look a bit like a, a black mission and even this negra primaranca i would probably guess just based on how similar they are to black mission uh, they have the same problem you know the adriatic types and the not all the adriatics and not all the black missions but most of them are the classic versions of them uh, typically take longer to, to see and show those fruit buds. Here's another one. Again, very similar. It doesn't have the fruit buds just yet. So I'm just patiently waiting and looking and trying to give it more attention and light. And It's super healthy. This was an air layer as well last year. We put into a larger pot from one of my in-ground trees. This thing's taken off. It's a full-fledged tree now. You know, so that's really powerful the uh, air layers that you can put on on your in-ground trees given a large enough pot and given an early enough date you put the air layer on you know i would even wrap around a three or five gallon pot around some of the branches that come up from these trees and that's what you end up with same thing happened over here with this Mahler vermella no fruit buds yet um but it's a full-fledged tree and very healthy and believe it or not my mala vermella in the ground hasn't woken up yet so it could be dead um i have to probably either be a bit more patient and that's kind of leading me in a little bit to this tree right here because on the the wall here of the potted figs we have some grafted trees and this is one in the front that just didn't wake up this was the only potted fig out of all of them that took the longest to wake up. It's a Bergen unknown air layer. 
that again I took an air layer from my Bergen unknown tree in the ground because I wanted to get this tree a better glimpse of the fruit um, and it would be easier if I can have it in a container now knowing what I know now that's not really the case because all I have to do in the fall is bend over some of these suckers close to the ground cover them with leaves or straw throw the tarps over top and then in the spring these suckers plop back up and they're only really 18 inches off the ground that's all I need and from those 18 inch suckers they'll fruit give it enough light they'll fruit um, so Bergen Unknown as an example is just um, you know it was the the idea before was to air layer some of the trees that uh, I've yet to really see much fruit off of so I wanted to evaluate it more but it's woken up so slowly now actually there's a brava on it that's interesting uh, this will be a brava that actually if it ripens I don't know if it will that ripens in line with my main crop so it'll be a very very late it is a very late start to the season um, and hopefully I get something off of it who knows here's actually some of the graphs that we did this is a black celeste these are both black celeste over here onto pretty much unknown rootstocks i pretty much just choose a healthy rootstock i don't i would rather not waste the rootstock i'd rather just graft something onto it this is a rootstock here it didn't take i don't think the rootstock was really ready uh to accept scion and hopefully this growth down here grows quite healthy so that uh i can graft onto it next year same thing with this one it wasn't really ready and you can kind of see that in there there's such a weird thing that happens in the center of the tree i forget what the um the term is right there's the bark then there's the cambium the inside of the this white clear inside i forget what that's called um man it's gonna bother me but anyway that white inside you can see it's kind of receded down and there's a hole um that white inside was clear at the time of grafting and the tree was bleeding like crazy so i personally think that some of these trees are just not great rootstock and that's just the reason why some of them didn't take this one here i think is probably raspberry latte rootstock which is as good as it gets um this one uh two of the scion over here didn't take this was something i put on later because this one didn't take and this is campaneri and then this one over here is balone we put this one on really not that long ago i mean these were put on probably two two weeks ago if that um and here's some other ones we put on as well to kind of help this tree get along and get this one growing but um actually no we never put on uh, we did put on a second one right here two weeks ago but this one has not taken and you can tell it's kind of shriveled up a bit the parafilm isn't looking good but this this one did take and this is a verdino del nord which is very good um exactly what i want to see here's a verdino del nord i grafted last year and happy to see this year it's branching out well there's a lot of really thin branches because i after the tree had woken up i then grafted verdino del nord onto it and didn't even realize that actually this is verdino del nord i had totally uh flaked on that one so then i realized later took off the grafts and then after cutting it back so many times and removing a lot of the shoots it's come back really well and you can see there's fruit forming right in there and there will be fruit buds and other fruits that will form later in the season that probably will ripen around um, the time maybe some of the late figs do probably in september um, more younger trees these were in one gallon size pots just you know today's probably like uh, a month and a half ago this was in a one gallon size pot and then same thing with this one you know hasn't grown much but they're fruiting this one has taken off this is a celeste 
I think this one, yeah, this one's from Ocean City. So this is a Celeste that um, my friend Dom had found in Ocean City, New Jersey. And I went there and got myself a sucker, took it home, and this is it. And this is probably one of the most productive figs I've ever seen in person. It's ridiculously productive. Uh, so many Celeste figs on that one. So we'll see what that one does. And, you know, it is what it is. But we got more graphs down there. There's Bertolino graphs and more Verdino del Nord and more uh, Black Celeste. Let's see. Those are really the three that I'm the most fond of. Here's a uh, Verdolino tree that I have. It's looking a lot healthier now. It had a weird start to the season and the growth looked a bit weird and you could see how it was infected a bit by the virus and it shook that off pretty quick and then now it's resuming growth and you can see how long the stems are. Ooh. So the fruits typically will ripen very early. Here's a sucker down here that's much healthier. So probably what I'll end up doing is uh, a little bit of a pro tip is at the end of this season, I'll cut everything off down here and just leave this as the main trunk of the tree. And that'll be a very healthy tree going forward. Um, here's one that someone sent me. I think it may have been my friend Chris who sent me this. This is uh, San Donato de Nia, the Ninia. Um, which is, I think, a town in Italy. It's a hardy Chicago. Apparently, it's a better hardy Chicago. I also have the um, Novid's Unknown Dark Reek over here, which, you know, him and I actually years ago on Figs for Fun, we're talking like eight years ago or something, got in a little bit of an argument because I was trying to tell, educate a lot of people and put together a list of hardy chicago's and the list was like over 60 and it eventually grew to 80 and then it was i think even now i probably could name about a hundred different named varieties of hardy chicago and he didn't like that because some people just don't really like the fact that you're lumping certain varieties together but in reality the differences are very minor um so i don't know what the what he's going on about personally i think yeah, there's little screws loose there or something. But um, anyway, the point is, is that um, that's his tree. So that's the one that he finds so special and different than Hardy Chicago. And uh, knowing what I know now about these Hardy Chicagos and really about synonyms of figs is that it's all about the epigenetics. In fact, a lot of the Hardy Chicago, named Hardy Chicago types, could say there's a hundred of them. Well, they, uh, they may even share the same exact genetics, um, but they have different epigenetics. So they show different characteristics and they are different in that way based on their environment, based on where they were adapting to and growing in for a number of years. Um, but a lot of them may actually just be exactly the same. So we're, of course, comparing so many different types of very, very similar figs here to find out really uh, if there's one that's superior. I'm not ending my search with just the Zor's Dark, even though that's a pretty darn good choice. Um, what else do we have down here? This is an interesting fig. It's called Hivernenka, but it's not your Hivernenka that uh, you would find in Ponza's book or even most of Spain. I don't even know why it's named Hivernenka. I guess because it's from that area, but it's actually a very small fig. And it looks very, very tasty. So I'm glad to have picked this one up. And it's growing nicely and it's going to fruit. So first year fig even though this was in a one gallon size pot last year, it was very small at the beginning of the season and it's doing rather well now. Pretty much the majority of these figs over here, almost every single one of them, although they are very small and young, is gonna fruit or does already have fruits on them. 
Um, you could see the fruit buds on most of these trees, uh, even though they could look a bit sad. Here's one called Corio Province, which uh, very interested in this fig. This one really turned out to be something interesting that a grower found uh, from someone in France, I think. And to me, it looks a bit like Sucret, but we'll see. Whatever it is, it's very good. Uh, what else do we have over here? This is Old de Purdue. I'm not even sure if this fig is going to fruit this year, but this is again another air layer I took, just like the Mala, just like the Verdino Giacomo and the Bergen Unknown. It's hard to get these air layers, I think, to fruit the following year. It is what it is. Maybe if I got them more established last year in the containers that they were in, and then this year they could maybe have a shot. I'm not sure. This is Unknown Spain. Looks like it's going to fruit as well from my friend Peter. Papone, although we're young and looked like it was struggling in the beginning of the season, is now coming into its own, and that thing's going to fruit. This is... Um, and a very interesting fig, Moscatel Bronco. I am very curious to see if this one's going to have more of a uh, more of a berry flavor this year to it. Um, it seems to be a very early fig, um, certainly on the early side, let's say, because these fruits are well ahead most of the trees, and um, that did not receive a head start. So that's a great sign this is um brooklyn white finally you have something that's somewhat established from brooklyn white um i know my friend tony's obsessed with it so a lot of these figs just by the way have fruits on them it's great to see um this one doesn't pernet noir and that's because again it's kind of similar to the black missions i kind of put it in that same category this is Lungo Fico de Portugalo, or Fico Lungo de Portugalo. Lungo Fico de Portugalo, which comes from uh, Mario's collection. And it's just like very similar to LDA, right? Lungo Fico de... <laughs> Lungo de Portugalo really is just the kind of the Italian version of LDA, long to do. But I tasted this one at his place, and it blew me away. It was an incredibly good long to do. And it was smaller and dried on the tree. So how do you get myself cuttings? That's another thing, right? Comparing different LDA trees to each other. Do um, you have anything else interesting back here? We have a Malta Black in a container now. That's another fig I'm trying in a, as a hardy Chicago experiment. This is another Mario fig called Castel Tresino. This is one of his earliest figs and I never heard of it when I saw pictures of it. It didn't look like anything I could recognize. Um, so really excited to have this and fruit it. It looks like it's getting established now. Um, and it's covered in fruit, so easy to fruit and early. So that's cool. Uh, also from Mario's collection. You know, it's nice to have to see some of the figs that Mario had. I didn't really have, really, I didn't experience uh, too much from his collection. It was kind of a mystery for a while. Um, there's also his Oregon Unknown right there, which is a very, super early Dalmaty fig. Um, just like Dalmaty, but early. Like one of his earliest figs, which is crazy because it, that just shouldn't be the case. So I don't know if that's going to translate well here. He has, um, he had a really interesting microclimate and there was just so much heat where he was at. Uh, with all the concrete that he surrounded these figs with. And that probably 
made a lot of the figs I would imagine ripen relatively around the same time. So the the Oregon Unknown, I don't know if that's going to continue to be the case to ripen super early f for everybody, but we'll, f we'll find out. Why not? What is this one here? I don't remember. Let's see. Peter's Honey. So this is Peter's Honey from Rain Tree Nursery. And I'm not sure actually if this one is going to fruit. So really strange because this is an air layer from my in-ground tree as well. So the air layers just don't fruit, I guess. Is that the story? If it's an air layer, they just want to grow. I don't know. Rockaway green, supposed to be a Adriatic type, that doesn't split. Have my doubts, but it's gonna fruit. We'll get to see. There's actually a small fig on that. You know, these younger trees, they're usually further behind everything else just because they're younger. But the more they become established, they really start to ripen, you know, right around the right time that they should. Um, and for that, you, know, you kind of just have to be patient. Um, you have to just kind of uh, keep an open mind about when exactly they ripen. Because um, it just doesn't always tell you the story, unfortunately. But sometimes these younger trees are... I, I don't know exactly how to put it, but they're established enough, maybe? Or... They are definitely some insights into when exactly they're going to ripen. So this Castel Tresino, as an example, is pretty far ahead, even compared to a lot of the older trees in the containers. Um, so this has given me an indication that, you know, it's not established, but it's still fruiting relatively early. So that means it's definitely an early fig because it's only going to get probably earlier in the future. Um, now it could just stay the same and ripen around the same time as it will this year, but probably unlikely. So you can draw some conclusions with this, but a lot of the time this will change. Your conclusions will have to change slightly about some of the younger trees. And, uh, you know, it's no big deal, whatever. What is this? Let's see. This is Melandra Blanca from Ponds. Your friend Peter. Thank you to Peter. I bought this one from him. It's a fig I've been kind of wanting to grow for a long time. Um, I know Bass had a tree years ago that he was getting rid of that was in a large pot. And I had to come pick it up to buy it from him. And I just wasn't willing to pick it up. Um, which is kind of a mistake because I <laughs> should have just did it. Should have just went there and got it. Um, for a cheaper price, I would have got it, and it would have been huge and much more well-established. But it is what it is, you know. You can't always have time to go out and get trees, you know. It's just like, unfortunately, uh, not the case all the time. But anyway, here is um, Rondé Bordeaux. This is probably going to be the most impressive tree of the year, I think. If I had a guess, I'm going to be really, really, really happy with this tree this year. And the reason for that is because there's fruit all over it. Basically from the first leaf that shows, or the second leaf that shows, all the way up on these, uh, on these new branches. So it's amazing how much fruit I think I'll see on this tree just by getting it through the winter time. This branch back here, oh, it does have some fruit actually, so I will leave it alone. I was considering if this branch, because it's growing so quickly, and you can see a lot of the branches are forming down there, but there's figs also forming. So I'm gonna leave that alone, not bother it. But uh, if it was just gonna keep growing like that, I probably would just air layer it, and these other shoots would take over I would pinch off the top, stop it from growing, or even just put it down on the ground and let the air layer kind of uh, 
force it along the ground horizontally and let these other shoots grow. Um, but yeah, guys, there's way a super amount of fruit on this tree. Like it's going to be crazy and it's all going to ripen probably starting August 1st, which is fantastic. I mean, look at the size of some of these. Maybe August 10th would be probably the latest date. So somewhere in the first week of August, I, I would imagine. Um, the little ruby is, is in the same boat. And there's going to be a ton of fruits. I would probably guess between both of these trees, I may even get 250 figs a piece. Um, so that's a lot of fruit, guys. This other one here in the middle is a uh, Fico Seco. It's not as established as the other two, but it's gonna produce a lot and early. So I would imagine same time it'll ripen. Well, actually it is supposed to ripen later than the two of them. It is an early fig, but it's not as early as Ron de Bordeaux or Little Ruby. So we'll see, see what happens. This JH Adriatic is finally putting out some fruit buds down here. And it seems like it wants to fruit, but I just don't know because the honest truth, something weird is happening with uh, this Texas BA-1. And that this Texas BA-1 actually has fruit buds and it formed fruit buds very early in the season. Um, you can see actually fruit right up in there, lower on the branches. But these, uh, as the, the branches have grown and the new leaves have formed, there's no fruit buds present. So there's a number of fruit buds on the tree, but it only seemed like it was doing that early in the season, forming those fruit buds. And then now that the tree has kind of resumed growth, it's growing quickly again. It's not fruiting. I don't, I don't know. It's such an unusual fig, Smith and Texas BA-1. But the fruit buds could be there, they're just not showing up. So just like we discussed early in the video, uh, we have to be a little patient. But there's nothing I can do, unfortunately. I have really opened up the trees kind of as much as I can, giving them as much light as possible. There's nothing really to do. Um, so it's just a matter of this location doesn't get enough light that's really all it is now maybe there's something else going on we've talked a lot about hormonal imbalances in the past and how that was thought to be one of the problems but i don't really know how much that's true uh the light has certainly made maybe there's it's part of maybe part of that is also in the equation but why would there be a hormonal imbalance? I don't understand that one because the tree is alive. You know, it did survive the winter and it should be fruiting really well. Over here is stallion, which is a type of Celeste and it is forming its figs now down in here and looking really, really productive right now. Super, super productive. Every fig, every leaf basically on this tree could have a, uh, a fig. Actually, this lower branching down here doesn't. But I think even, by the way, some of these suckers are forming fruits. Wow, that's a really weird situation right there. There's a hole in that. Uh, but it looks like down here on the sucker, there's two buds forming. And this is from older wood last year uh, that I would just say is a lot more difficult to fruit. You know, it's typical water shoot style. Gonna grow very vigorously and not fruit. Um, this fig over here is Azores Dark, same thing. Really, really doing well. Putting out a lot of fruit. This one here survived Kefeji Black, but there's no fruit buds present. So 
you do need a specific amount of light. And that's the problem with this fig right now. Um, you know, even if it does survive and it's in a container, it survives in a container. You know, you take the container, you put it in your storage and it lives. It doesn't mean it's gonna fruit the following year because if it doesn't have enough light, good luck. So this tree has just really been pissing me off lately about just not fruiting. But, you know, it is what it is. I did get a fruit bud last year and got it to fruit. Um, wasn't able to harvest the fruit in time. I think a bird or a squirrel got it. Here's actually Negra primarenca from a container I planted about a month and a half ago. And it has fruit buds on it. So that's really interesting. Um, yeah, I would have thought it was easy to fruit. I would have thought that uh, I wouldn't have a problem actually getting fruit buds, but it seems like the in-ground fig, even though very unestablished, is actually doing a lot better than the one that's in a container, which is just kind of mind-blowing. That's much older. So it really all is about the health, right? It's not just about, well, how old is it? Because it doesn't answer the question, right? There's an exact, you know, example right there. It's insane, I think, how productive LSU Bouye is in just even a very small, tight spacing. It's like, really took on those Celeste genes to produce fruit in a very um, shady, tight spacing. I think that's really one of Celeste's best qualities. Not all of them are like that, but somehow as they get older, they, they are that. They you know, are very, very productive trees. And um, you know, this Celeste from Ocean City, as an example, is is that but i wouldn't describe it right now as really all that productive because it's so young there are fruit buds forming but i don't know it's so hard to say like what how do these celeste trees you know become so productive because when i grow them a lot of them they really do need a lot of light to set those fruit buds but when they get older it seems like they don't um it's weird so anyway, there's more to this, I'm sure, than we all know. Of course, I don't know everything, and there's more to this. That's the best part about figs, is that there's always something to learn, and it's never really just one thing. But, you know, here's actually a pastillieri we have in a container now. I'm trying to grow this one and see if it'll fruit for me more reliably because the other theory I have about light and about getting our fig trees to fruit is that things like Celeste, Pastelier, even St. Martin, they tend to um, produce fruit and then they drop their fruits. And I don't think a lot of people understand why. Why do some figs drop their fruits? Because they're common, right? They're confirmed common. They do not need the wasp. Some people make the argument, oh, well, they're partially parthenocarpic. Well, you think Celeste is partially parthenocarpic? But it does drop figs. Stallion does drop figs. Why does Stallion drop figs? Why does this Pastelier drop figs? Well, the answer, I think, is just very simply that the fruits need light to form, right? The fruit buds will not form without light, but once the fruits form along the branches, as they continue to ripen and expand to a larger size, they also need light. And if the tree becomes too shady, well, then you can kind of forget about it. Um, it is what it is at that point. And then the, the tree will just kind of drop the fruits. 
and you're kind of screwed. So, I think it's snack time here, guys. Um, I'm gonna eat myself some peas. I thank you. I thank you for watching. That's pretty good right there, huh? But anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this kind of video, this little walk and talk thing, we're gonna keep doing this. It is quite long, so the longer they are, the typically the less YouTube likes the algorithm, but or the algorithm likes the video. But if you really enjoy this kind of stuff, uh, you know, subscribe and then also comment because the only way I'm going to keep doing this kind of thing is if one, a lot of people really, really like it or two, if the algorithm is like in some way appreciating what I'm doing. So, um, really should need to have both, but I thank you guys here for watching this one. We'll see you soon. Catch you guys for the next one. All right. Take care.